wheat fungicides. There are many different timings, a lot of different products. We're gonna talk about those things today, but the first thing that I want you to think about is, in terms of wheat disease tolerance, it's not as great as what we're typically gonna find in corn and soybeans. Part of it is just the breeding dollars that have been stuck into corn and soybeans compared to wheat. But the other side of it is, just think about the canopy that we're creating even very early in the season with wheat that traps a lot of moisture. And when that does, it makes conditions ripe for disease. With fungicides, it's important to understand how they work in the plant. They move in the xylem, which means they can only move up. They don't move down. So we've got to get great coverage when you're putting fungicides out, which typically means more water, more gallons per acre, and more pressure with slightly smaller spray droplets. So we don't want to have great big droplets, especially on small wheat. So when we get this good coverage out there, think about the new growth on wheat. I did say that fungicides move up, but they basically move up a little bit in the same leaf. They're not gonna protect new leaves that come out in a few days. So as those new leaves come out, they're unprotected. So we'll be back out again later in the season to treat again. Darren brings up a great point. So I want you to think about what's the most important leaf to protect on wheat. Well, obviously it's a flag leaf and that's why typically flag leaf applications have the most yield. Now we also see, depending on the year, heading timing applications pay tremendously well too. But the third application timing that we really wanted to focus on today is what we would call herbicide timing. So when you're gonna go out and spray your herbicide, you're already making a trip over the field, it's early in the season. That's when a lot of times we can go with reduced rates, but there are many diseases that are gonna show up early. So that's the timing that we think is tremendously important right now because it's gonna be the first one that we're gonna hit here this spring. Let's talk about products a little bit. You might be using just straight propiconazole or tilt today. And we look at that as kind of some old technology and a chance for you to upgrade and get more yield potential out of your crop by switching to something with two modes of action. So it's nice to use a, a triazole type product like propiconazole. We'd like to see a strobal urine type product go in there as well. You could buy two modes of action in a premix or you could potentially mix your own. Now, if you want to get three modes of action out there, you could throw an SDHI into this mix as well. Nexacor, for example, is a triazol, a strobe, and an SDHI. Same thing with Trivapro. So you have two different choices there, both three modes of action. And while three modes of action sounds like it's going to be a lot more expensive than something like a generic propiconazole, it's only a few bucks more. You can get Nexacor at the half rate for the first spraying in your wheat crop for only about five bucks. If you have not been doing any fungicide on your wheat in the past, we just encourage you at least try some out, try some strips on your farm, and then you gotta look real close. Keep in mind, like even investing $5, that may or may not sound like a lot of money to you, but it's not gonna take very much wheat to make that pay. Well, that little difference in yield, is that gonna show up on a yield monitor? No, it's not. So you've gotta really look close to see, hey, did this pay? Did this double my money, which is really what I'm after? Did it triple my money? Did I break even? How did I do? And when you're looking to go out to those wheat field spraying fungicide, you'll also wanna watch out for our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. <music> 